Moses and the burning bush. In the far reaches of the sun-drenched lands of ancient Egypt, where the sands whispered tales of epochs long past, the once celebrated Israelites found themselves ensnared in the chains of servitude. Under the scorching gaze of Ra, their history had mutated from one of honor to one of anguish, as if tainted by some malignant hand unseen. It was murmured in hushed tones amongst the commoners that Pharaoh's heart, once as magnanimous as the fertile Nile, had been tainted with a dread poison. Those who dared utter such heresies in the open were convinced of an eldritch influence that held their leader's heart and mind in an iron grip. Shadows seemed to lengthen, strange symbols appeared scrawled on the palace walls, and priests of the great god Ra often found their prayers interrupted by a bone-chilling wind. In the abyssal realms of twilight, where humanity dare not tread, the enigmatic god Anubis associated with the afterlife, but known to a few as an emissary of forces beyond comprehension, whispered treacherous thoughts into Pharaoh's already troubled mind. The Israelites, Anubis hissed in tones as cold as the spaces between the stars, multiply. Their intentions are insidious and they conspire to see your vast empire crumble. The insidious influence of Anubis intensified the paranoia that had already taken root in Pharaoh's soul. Gazing across his magnificent city with eyes now clouded with dread, he resolved upon a most grievous edict. Each newborn male of Hebrew blood was to be cast into the bottomless abyss, a void where not even the gods dare venture, where the inscrutable darkness would consume their innocence. As mothers wept and fathers raged against this horrifying decree, the Nile, the giver of life to Egypt, flowed with an eerie calm, as if aware of the dreadful deeds it would soon witness. The riverbank became an altar of despair, and the cries of bereaved parents melded with the haunting lament of the wind. While many in the kingdom accepted this terrible fate as the will of their pharaoh, there were those who whispered that the strings of their leader were pulled by a darker power. Anubis, with his canine visage and cloak of night, lurked in every shadow, his ambitions grand and his methods unfathomable. In this age of despair, the hope of an entire people would soon rest upon the waters of the Nile, where destiny, in its enigmatic wisdom, was preparing to set a new tale in motion. The eternal Nile, a river of ancient secrets and forbidden knowledge, flowed through the heart of Egypt like a lifeblood, carrying with it tales of yore and prophecies yet to be realized. It was upon this river's edge, among the reeds and lilies, that an ark of bulrushes concealed a fate that would shake the pillars of the cosmos. In the quietude of morning, as the rose-tinted hues of dawn caressed the still waters, a daughter of Pharaoh, accompanied by her handmaidens, approached the river bank for her sacred ablutions. But instead of the usual tranquility, an unexpected melody, a baby's cry, filled the air, its notes filled with both vulnerability and unseen power. Drawn by a force she could neither understand nor resist, the princess uncovered the ark, and therein lay a child of Hebrew descent. His eyes, though those of an infant, seemed to hold galaxies of ancient wisdom, and for a fleeting moment she felt as though she stared into the vastness of the universe. The spell was broken when the infant's hands reached out, a simple gesture that tied their destinies together. Naming him Moses, which in her tongue meant drawn from water, she adopted him into the royal fold. Unbeknownst to her, she had brought into the heart of Egypt's power the very seed of its potential undoing. As Moses matured within the palace's marble halls, surrounded by luxury and opulence, an unsettling dissonance grew within him. The whispering walls, perhaps imprinted with the arcane energies of the land, recounted to him the cries of his brethren, their lamentations echoing in the chambers of his soul. The weight of a divided heritage pressed upon him, a duality of princely privilege and the pain of his true kin. One fateful day, his inner turmoil manifested. 
observing an Egyptian taskmaster meeting out cruelty upon a Hebrew slave, something primordial and fierce stirred within Moses. An uncontrollable rage, as vast and tempestuous as the stormy seas of old, propelled him. Striking down the tormentor, Moses felt the chilling touch of reality's fabric tearing, realizing he had awakened forces both terrestrial and cosmic. Whispers of his deed spread like wildfire, reaching even the ears of the pharaoh, whose mind, already ensnared by the spectral grip of Anubis, perceived this as a portent. Moses, sensing the impending doom and the tightening noose of eldritch forces, chose exile over confrontation. He fled the vast expanse of Egypt, seeking solace in the distant lands of Midian. But as he traversed the dunes, guided only by the pale moonlight and the distant constellations, Moses could not shake off the feeling of being watched by eyes far older and more mysterious than those of mere mortals. The weight of destiny pressed upon him as inexorable as the march of time itself. Beyond the known boundaries of Egypt's vast expanse, where the golden dunes merged into rugged terrains, lay the serene lands of Midian. It was a realm apart, untouched by the encroaching shadows that so poisoned the heart of the Nile Kingdom. Here, under canopies of starlit majesties, time seemed to flow differently, as though resisting the pull of some inscrutable cosmic force. Moses, now an exile in these foreign lands, sought solace among its inhabitants. In his solitude, he had hoped to escape the echoing cries of his kin and the looming specter of Anubis, but destiny's threads are spun by hands unseen and unknowable. It was in this sanctuary that Moses' eyes met those of Zipporah, a woman of ethereal beauty and grace. Her presence seemed to quell the tempestuous seas within him, and in her gaze, Moses found a refuge far more comforting than any shelter. Drawn together by forces ancient and profound, the two entwined their lives. Moses, adopting the humble life of a shepherd, would lead his flock under the vast indigo skies, while the luminous orbs above bore witness to their love. Nights in Midian were a spectacle to behold where the constellations danced, recounting tales from epochs long gone. Yet, even in these moments of tranquility, Moses could not wholly escape the omnipresent grip of his fate. The serenity of Midian's landscapes would occasionally be disrupted by haunting dreams, eldritch visions of vast abysses, cyclopean structures, and the ever-watchful eyes of Anubis. The gods' shadowy tendrils seemed to stretch even to this remote haven, attempting to ensnare the very soul of the Hebrew outcast. Zipporah, sensing the tumult within her beloved, would often sing hymns of old, their melodies crafted to ward off malevolent entities. Her voice, harmonizing with the gentle winds of Midian, created a protective aura, repelling the dark forces that sought entry. And so, amid love's warm embrace and the protective chants of Zipporah, Moses began to find a semblance of peace, but as the sands of time continued their relentless march, it became increasingly evident that his journey was far from its conclusion. The cosmos itself seemed to whisper that his role in the grand tapestry of existence was yet to be fully realized. In a remote cradle of Midian, encircled by mountains like titanic sentinels of stone, stood the mysterious Mount Horeb. This place, draped in legends and ancient folklore, was said to be a nexus where the veil between realms grew thin, a place where the cosmic and the terrestrial could touch. Moses often led his flock near its base, a region that even the most seasoned shepherds shunned for reasons they dared not articulate. On an afternoon veiled in a sense of portentous calm, Moses found himself drawn away from the security of known paths. The sky above, once a canvas of endless azure, metamorphosed into an amalgamation of colors too strange to be named, and Moses felt the boundaries of time and space bend and warp. Propelled by a force otherworldly yet intimate, he felt himself gravitate towards the higher slopes of Mount Horeb. There, he encountered an enigma that defied the laws of nature, 
a bush ablaze yet untouched by the flame. Its fire was unlike any other, a mesmerizing dance of hues that suggested realms and realities beyond human comprehension. And from within this impossible flame, a voice resonated, reverberating in the very marrow of his bones. Moses, Moses, the voice intoned, echoing as if from the depths of eternity. Trembling, Moses hid his face, for he was filled with a profound and unspeakable fear of gazing upon this entity. Here I am. Moses replied, his voice but a whisper. It was then that the ancient deity identified himself as Yahweh, the God of his fathers, the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob. The presence of Yahweh filled the air, suffusing reality with a palpable aura of sanctity and dread. I have seen the misery of my people in Egypt, and I have heard their cries, Yahweh said, each word carrying the weight of unspoken millennia. I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people out of Egypt. At this proclamation, Moses hesitated, his voice quivering. But who am I to appear before the elders of Israel? They will not believe me, and I am of slow speech and tongue. A flicker of celestial anger emanated from the fire. I shall be with you, Yahweh responded tersely, and your brother Aaron will speak for you. Yahweh, understanding the reservations within Moses, bestowed upon him a series of signs, manifestations of cosmic power. A staff that could transmute into a serpent, a hand that could turn leprous and heal again, and lastly, the ability to turn the very waters of the Nile into blood. These signs, while awe-inspiring, served to also remind Moses of the titanic confrontation that lay ahead where he would challenge deities older than the world itself. Thus, armed with the potent signs of Yahweh and accompanied by the promise of Aaron's voice, Moses, filled with a mix of trepidation and divine purpose, set his face towards Egypt, towards the heart of darkness, towards a confrontation with powers that mortals dare not even whisper. The foreboding deserts of Egypt, ever shifting and whispering their ancient secrets, were the backdrop for Moses' furtive movements. Under the veil of a cosmos pregnant with arcane energies, he rendezvoused with Aaron, his blood, the one chosen to voice the divine proclamations Moses so desperately needed to convey. Their reunion, punctuated by the otherworldly signs Yahweh had bestowed upon Moses, was both heartening and terrifying. Aaron, ever the eloquent, beheld the transformation of the staff into a serpent and the manifestation of the plague upon Moses' hand with a mix of awe and horror. The true depth of their mission with all its cosmic implications was beginning to dawn upon them. Gathering themselves, they convened with the elders of Israel, revealing to them the extent of Yahweh's designs and the magnitude of the divine power they now wielded. The signs were repeated, and as Moses' staff transformed and his hand bore witness to the divine affliction, a hushed reverence fell upon the gathering. The weight of millennia of oppression and longing hung in the air, now tinged with a burgeoning hope. Yet, within the sinuous byways of Egypt, other forces stirred. Whispers of Moses' return and the strange miracles accompanying him began to slither into the ears of Pharaoh's informants. The very wind seemed to hum with anticipation, bearing tales of the oncoming confrontation between forces beyond mortal comprehension. Moses, sensing the growing unease and the tightening noose, prepared his people. Every moment was precious, every whispered prayer, every hushed conversation, every clandestine gathering, a small step in their monumental journey towards freedom. In the midst of their covert preparations, the ineffable voice of Yahweh found Moses once more, reminding him of the daunting task ahead and the cosmic confrontation that awaited. But it also spoke of hope, of liberation, and of a new dawn for the children of Israel. We hope you enjoyed this story. It would greatly help to support our creators if you liked the video and subscribe to the channel. Also check out the playlist in the description. Thank you very much and we hope to see you next time.